Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV. I'm gonna do a hardware review today of some external hard drives. I've been working with Thunderbolt hard drives for a long time, and I really needed something faster, so I was looking around at different options, and I came across the Thunder Bay 4, and this is the Thunder Bay 4 Mini, and I have the Thunder Bay 4 also in front of me. It's going to be a little bit beefier, and so what I'm looking for, as you can see, this is the Thunder Bay 4 Mini. It's a little bit bigger. It's gonna be running with the three and a half inch drives versus the two and a half inch drives for the Thunder Bay Mini. Now, what I needed was a storage solution that's gonna help me with the amount of videos that I am creating. OWC was kind enough to let me borrow both of these units that I have in front of me. So I was able to test out both the mini as well as the, the bigger one, which is a little bit heavier. So I've got two review units that I am playing around with and I want to give you some real world applications and my thoughts on how these drives are working. Now to give you a little bit of background, I've gotten into a lot of video editing lately because I teach people how to create iPhone apps. So I've got online courses where I create lots of different courses on various topics related to making iPhone apps. And throughout the production over the past year, I've filmed over 350 videos. I really wanted a way to make sure that some of those videos were safe and sort of backed up in a redundant fashion. As well, I needed faster access for all of the video editing and sort of compositing that I was doing. I shoot a lot of B-roll and I've been incorporating that into more and more of my videos. Most of the, the application that I'm using right now are screen flow and final cut for the videos. And so that's what I'm gonna sort of take a look at. And I'm also gonna give you some perspective into how these two drives are gonna sort of stand up against some of the other drives that I have in my office. I've got the my book, which is also a Thunderbolt drive and it is not as fast as I would like. So we're gonna take a look at how fast these Thunder Bay drives are really gonna be in a real world situation and if they live up to the claims that the manufacturer has provided. Okay, so when I look at external drives, what I wanted was something that had a faster write performance. I wanted the faster read performance. And so I was looking at a RAID solution. Now, there's a, a lot of different variations of RAID and this is gonna configure how your different hard drives connect together. What I'm going to be investigating is the RAID 5 and the RAID 0. Now the RAID 0, is something that you would use as a, a video person or if you're working with a lot of media and you want to scratch space. This is a space where you can just work on your files really quickly at the, the fastest that you can perform any action. So this is going to use multiple drives and it's going to allow you to store data on all of them so that you can get faster write speeds than you can get with a single drive. Now the downside is there's no redundancy. So if you lose any of the drives, you lose all of the data. None of it's backed up unless you're manually backing it up. Now, once you're done working on an edit or something like that, you're gonna transfer over to something like RAID 5, or maybe you'll just stick to editing in RAID 5, depending on how fast your drive array is. And so that's where I'm really interested in the, the Thunder Bay drives, because I wanna run RAID 5 and I want faster performance. And that's one of the benefits that you get with going from something like two drives up to four drives where you can actually take advantage of something like RAID 5. So we're gonna jump into our tests and sort of take a look at these devices and just run through my thoughts and sort of the results that we get as I sort of compare them together as well as compare them with my existing uh, Mac Pro internal drive as well as the other external drive that I have from Western Digital. All right, so let's jump right into the reviews and take a look at the performance so that you can get an idea how these drives work together. All right, so we are testing out these new hard drives on a Mac Pro. Now the Mac Pro already comes with a really fast internal flash setup with its memory, but it's not gonna be redundant. And so that's one of the things that we're looking for for storing videos, we don't want to have everything just on the, the Mac Pro. I, I'm running out of space on it. So what we need is something that can go in conjunction. Now, to start out, I'm currently working with a MyBook Thunderbolt Duo. And in RAID 1, this performance is really killing me. And we'll, we'll get and see what the performance is. But it's not good enough. Super sluggish. I really don't trust it. So I'm looking for a solution that's going to provide more robustness and give me more performance for all the video work that I'm looking at. So I came across the OWC Thunder Bay 4, 
And here we have the RAID version of this. I also have the mini version of the same thing. These both support dual Thunderbolt uh, so that you can daisy chain them, which is really convenient. As well, it's gonna be the Thunderbolt 2. So this is gonna be the faster version of Thunderbolt that allows you to have uh, faster data between devices. And they both support RAID 5, which is gonna give you the, the most redundancy and it's actually gonna give you more space than if you did like a RAID 1 configuration. But you can also, you can really customize the different configurations of whatever RAID you need. You can do a scratch space for RAID 0, where it's just sort of throwaway workspace. And then when you wanna make sure that your projects are backed up, you just move them on over to your RAID 5 partition. Now, both of these drives are pretty quiet, though in my test, they're not silent. So you're gonna hear something, you might wanna move it off the desk or you might want to see if you can move it into another room if you have a really long Thunderbolt cable, but that's going to cost a lot more money. So they're not completely silent. They are noisier than the Thunderbolt Duo. There's some more fans running. There's more drives running. So that's going to increase, especially in the hard drive version, the overall sound profile of the drive. So when I work, I don't like to have any sound in the room. So I have a recording studio with my hard drives where I, I do a lot of editing, but at the same time I do a lot of recording. And so I generally will unplug hard drives that are noisy, do the recording, and then work on the video files on the external or the internal, depending on where the space is and where I'm working. All right, so I have the 12 terabyte version that I'm gonna be testing out. And this one is configured in RAID 5 right now, and it's pretty zippy. I do like the performance over the Thunderbolt Duo. And then we're gonna test out the Thunder Bay 4 Mini. Now this one, again, is gonna be with the RAID support. Again, it also has the dual Thunderbolt 2 so that you can daisy chain these drives together. I went with the, the version that's going to have the, the four terabytes that are going to be in RAID 5. I also have a scratch space that I set up on this just to test out what the max speed would be in a RAID 0. So I set that up as well. And we're gonna see that the, the performance specs that you see here are not what I saw in my test, but you can watch the rest of the video to see how that performs. Now again, this one is going to be a little bit quieter than the hard drive version. So if you're looking for something that's quieter, this will be quieter. It's not ultra quiet. I wouldn't necessarily classify it as near silent operation. It's quiet, but it's the noisiest thing in my office when it is running. Uh, my Mac Pro is what I would say near silent operation. These drives, not quite, but still pretty quiet and unobtrusive. They're not super noisy. I've had noisier devices in my office in the past. So I'm gonna be testing out the 12 terabyte version and the four terabyte version. We're gonna be playing with both RAID 5 and RAID 0 so we can see what the maximum performance of these drives are. I really need a space where I can feel comfortable doing the work and not have to wait for files to transfer uh, over a longer period of time. And, and that's really where the, the Thunderbolt Duo that I've been using, the My Book from Western Digital, just it's been dropping the ball for me. I've had a couple issues with it in the past. I don't really trust it. I really wanted a, a better, more robust system, and that's what RAID 5 provides. All right, so let's do a, a quick little test with Final Cut. This is just to show you what the difference is in loading these different files. I've got a 13.85 gigabyte file here, and this is probably the easiest way to show the difference in the read speeds in a, a practical use case. It's a little bit challenging to really capture this, so it's it's more on how it feels and how responsive the application is going to be. So let's just quickly, we'll load up the Thunderbolt Duo. This is a Western Digital. It's a, a four terabyte and I've got it in a RAID 1 and it's been really sluggish lately and I'm not sure why, but this is how fast it loads up. And so now we're loaded. All right, so that took a little bit of time. You can see that it pulled in a lot of different frames and the seeking works pretty well. I've already probably opened this a number of times now, and so I don't know how much it actually caches. Now let's take a look at how quick it is to open off of the Thunder Bay 4, which I have here. I've got the hard drive version. It's got uh, four three terabyte drives, so that's 12 terabytes uh, of data, and I've got that in a RAID 5 right now. So the actual space that's usable is gonna be a little bit less, but let's go ahead and just open that up. 
and it's ready to go. So that is a significant improvement. And then we probably won't really notice the difference when I try to load up the Thunder Bay 4 Mini, which is the SSD. This is in RAID 0 as well as RAID 5. And I'm just going to show you the RAID 0 because this one's faster than the Thunder Bay 4. That's the hard drive array. This one is the SSD array. So this is one's going to be super snappy. And I've got it in a RAID 0, so it's going to be as quick as possible. And we just double click to open and it's open. So pretty much from my, my experience, the Thunder Bay 4 mini SSD and the HDD uh, drives are going to run pretty much on par. They're both very snappy when you're doing the editing, when you're importing new files. Uh, I find them both to work quite well. And what I really needed was a, a bigger scratch space to work on. And I do want the redundancy. So having something like RAID 5 makes a lot of sense for that. I don't know if I need the scratch space, the speed of the SSD. It is really nice. It, it does work faster. Things are a little bit more responsive, but in order to feel that difference, it's, a, it's potentially two times faster than the Thunder Bay 4 hard drive version in the, the RAID 5. So, But when I was in the, the RAID 5 for the, the Mini, I did notice that it is a little bit slower on the write speed. So I'll, I'll jump into showing you how that looks with the Blackmagic test so you can sort of see what that's going to be all about. Uh, overall, these drives are a much nicer upgrade over the Thunderbolt Duo. So let's take a look at some other tests so you can sort of see the benchmarks of these drives running. All right, so now it's time for a disk speed test. Now, what you need to keep in mind is that the drive speeds that you're going to see from SSD and certain things like that, when you see a claim from a manufacturer, their, their sort of theoretical limit or whatever they test it at is going to be probably a significantly faster speed. Once we start doing anything with video, we're working sometimes with compressed videos. And what happens with hard drives, especially some models of SSDs, is that they cannot save the compressed data at the same speed that they can save simple data. So when you start testing real world situations like video files or Final Cut Pro projects when you're sort of copying them, you're going to notice that the actual write and read speeds are going to be different when you're really using the device in front of you. So the marketing sort of on the disk speed isn't always going to line up. And that's what I discovered with a lot of these drives that I use. All right, so let's jump right into the disk speed test and I can go ahead and I wanna start with the slowest drive that I have here. So let's select the target drive. I'm gonna jump on over to the, the My Book. This is the Thunderbolt Duo from Western Digital. This one's been really slow lately and I'm not sure why. It should be a little faster than this, but every time I've tested it, uh, and been using it, it has been significantly slower. So here we can see it's got around 103, 104 megabytes a second write speed, and then the read speed, we're getting 102, 103, 104, so it's going up a little bit. Um, so we're going to see these numbers are going to fluctuate. What it's doing is it's writing and reading 5 gigabytes of data to the disk. So it's a temporary file, and it's testing with some more real-world test with actual video files so that you can get an insight into what does compressed data look like when you're reading and writing it because all videos are going to be compressed unless you're working with the uncompressed formats which are going to be huge and so trying to write at, at such a slow speed is going to be a huge bottleneck in your editing process all right so that is the the slower drive we're going to switch this over to the probably in the next fastest, which is going to be the Thunder Bay 2. This is the one that's the hard drive configuration. This is the Thunder Bay 4, and this is the full size. I've got 12 terabytes of data here. We're just going to choose this and start our test, and we'll go through, and we'll see, wow, that is over five times faster at the write speed, so it's going to be a significant performance improvement for writing, and then for reading, we've got 547 or so, 530 megabytes a second. So this one is 
five times faster than the other drive, which is a, a huge win for me because I do a lot of video work. I'm working with a lot of big files. And this is really giving me performance that I, I haven't had on an external. So I'm excited about that. Let's go to the next one up. Now I'm gonna go for the actual internal. I'm on the Mac Pro here. So I'm gonna switch over to the, the Mac Pro and I guess I can go with any of these. Let's just go for the desktop. It's gonna write a file there. So let's start this and we can see what the Mac Pro is going to look like. So here you can see the Mac Pro is getting a faster performance than the RAID 5. Keep in mind though that the, the Mac Pro flash drive is not a redundant hard drive. So if there's a disk failure, you lose all the data, which is why you need Time Machine or some kind of backup service. I use CrashPlan uh, for some backups as well. I have a Time Machine backup in the office uh, and I copy any video files that I'm working into multiple hard drives and I have sort of a, a remote hard drive where I'll put things as well to just make sure I have redundancy not all in one location. All right, so here's the, the performance we're seeing. We're getting around 829 megabytes a second write speed. Now this is fluctuating a little bit and the read speed's around 955 megabytes a second. So this is significantly faster than the original drive we tested with and it's a little bit faster, uh, almost, almost twice as fast though, not quite on the write speeds as the RAID 5. Thunder Bay drive. All right, so let's switch this over to the other Thunder Bay. Now, I've got the the SSD Thunder Bay as Thunder Bay without anything. We'll go ahead, we'll test this one out, see if it's any different. Here, what we're gonna see is, I noticed that the, the write speed on the RAID 5 for the SSD Thunder Drive, sorry, Thunder Bay drive was a lot slower than the read speed. So here, we run into I guess it's it's pretty similar to the, the RAID 5 of the hard drive version, but this is on the SSDs. The read speed, however, is much faster. So here we're seeing that approach 944 megabytes uh, a second. All right, so that is the SSD. Now that is in a RAID 5 configuration. And so in terms of writing, it's not that significantly faster than the RAID 5 of the... Thunder Bay 4, so this is what I'm testing right now is the SSD drives in the Thunder Bay 4 Mini, and I'm gonna stop that, and we'll switch over to the Scratch drive that I set up, and this is in a RAID 1 setup, so this is gonna be the fastest, um, sorry, this is a RAID 0 setup. This is gonna be as fast as possible. There's no redundancy, so any data that if there's a disk failure, any data that's in this partition is going to be lost. And so when I start this up, you're gonna see that this is really fast. All right, so we broke a thousand megabytes a second. And so we're at 1,000, 90, 80 or so megabits a second. And then on our read speed, we're seeing uh, even a little bit faster, 1,100. Now, the claims for this drive were faster than this, but we're actually working with real video type data. So this is gonna give us a better insight into the actual performance characteristics of the SSD. So this is twice as fast as the, the RAID 5 version of the hard drive array from Thunder Bay, the Thunder Bay 4. So that's, that's an improvement. So you're gonna look at a 2X speed up, and this is gonna be a 10X speed up if your drive's only running at 100 megabytes a second, which my other Thunderbolt drive, for some reason, is at that speed. So overall, the performance characteristics of both of these Thunder Bay drives are great. I love the option of having the, the RAID 5, and so let's take a, a look at the, the build. All right, so let's look at what it, feels like to copy a file. I've got a 13.83 gigabyte file here. This is a, a file that I've got on my Mac Pro. This is a 2013. It's got the flash hard drive with 512 gigabytes. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna first go over and paste it onto the Thunderbolt Duo RAID 1. So this is the, the Western Digital Drive and we'll just paste it and start my timer. 
And this one we're going to be, I guess, waiting for a while. So I'm probably going to cut <laughs> and then jump in once it finishes. So let's just jump ahead in time. All right, so we're almost there. We've got maybe 10 seconds or so left. We're at a minute 53, we're still going. This is taking a while to copy just 13.83 gigabytes to my external. This is a common test. All right, so that's two minutes and two seconds. And let's do that test again, but let's do it for the Thunder Bay. So what I have here is I'm just gonna copy the same file again, and we are looking at the Thunder Bay 4. So this is a hard drive version, and we are going to be pasting into a RAID 5 volume. So let's go ahead and reset the timer and start it up again. All right, so it is copying. We've started the timer, and we can see that this is zipping along a lot faster. We'll, we'll get the final results of what this sort of real-world scenario of copying big files is going to look like. Now, this is copying the, the Final Cut Pro bundle, so there's going to be a lot of resources inside of that bundle. And we stop it. That was 27 seconds to finish. A lot faster. So we're looking at a quarter of the time uh, or so. So that's nice. So that's what we'd kind of expect. Now let's check out the Thunder Bay 4 mini SSD. Now this is again another RAID 5 partition. So I'm going to just copy the same file and then paste it over to this drive. And I'd expect it to be a little bit faster though in my test so far. I'm not sure how much faster this RAID 5 is going to be on writing than uh, the H hard drive version of it. All right, so let's reset the timer and paste it over. And it's off. So we're pasting to an SSD drive and let's see if this is faster. Now the RAID 5 is gonna slow things down a little bit, but it's gonna give us that redundancy and that peace of mind. So that's gonna be important. All right, so this was a little bit faster. No, oh, that was pretty good. That was 20 seconds to copy over. So that was nice. Now let's see what does it look like when it's ultra fast. Now this is gonna be in a RAID 0 configuration. So any data here, this is your scratch space and that's what I have right now. So this is where you're working on something where it's okay if you lose it because you still have all the data somewhere else, but you just want the fastest performance possible. So let's go ahead, reset the timer and do that one. And we are going quick. Almost done. And that was 15 seconds. All right, so there is a real world performance test. What we're looking at is pasting this Final Cut project and I'm pasting it from my Mac Pro. So it's going from the internal storage to the external storage. And this is one of the ways in which I would be working with this. Let's take a look at what's in a Final Cut Pro package. So let's right click and show the package just so you can see what is in here. We've got our original media files. So you can see there's a bunch of movie files. We've got, do we have any render files? There's a, a good amount of files in here. So it's not a, a simple file format. It's going to be a complex assortment of files that are sort of grouped within a folder structure. And so we're going to be copying all of that. So that is how the sort of a real world situation would work if you're working with Final Cut and then you're transferring the project over to another device and you want to back it up. That's sort of a real world situation in, in timing for what you're going to look at. So when we look at the, the four different variants, we had the Western Digital Thunderbolt Duo in a RAID 1, so it's got some redundancy and it's gonna be slower than it came out of the box. That took two minutes and two seconds, which is a long time for me, for just a 13 gigabyte file. Then we look at the, 
the hard drive RAID 5 with the Thunder Bay 4, that was 27 seconds. For the, the next contender, we had the SSD version. Now I have this partitioned into two parts. I've got a RAID 5 and then I've got a RAID 0. And, and so this is the RAID 5. The RAID 5 was 20 seconds. And then our last one was the RAID 0. So this is the ultra fast. This was 15 seconds. So there you can sort of see the breakdown in the performance and sort of get an idea of what this looks like when you're actually working with real files rather than just some hard drive tester. What does it look like to actually do the, the file transfers and, and working with lots of files on your Mac as you're working with videos, if you're working with images, anywhere where you have a ton of content and you're just moving things around and you're having to manage what's the, the current project, what's an older project and sort of transferring between devices so that you can have a, a good workspace. All right, so let's wrap up the results of the, the review for both of these Thunder Bay drives. We're gonna look at the file copy test. So I, I did the, the timing, we did that so you could watch and sort of see and feel how fast the different drives are. When I actually crunch the numbers down, we're looking at the MyBook Duo from Western Digital is right now giving me 113 megabytes a second. Now, again, that's a Thunderbolt drive and it's pretty slow because it's in a RAID one, which is gonna slow it down significantly. The Thunder Bay drives do significantly better in the RAID 5, and the fastest time we see was with the RAID 0 with the SSD drive. So the hard drive variant of the RAID 5 with the Thunder Bay was doing 502 megabytes a second. Then we had the SSD version of that was doing 679 megabytes a second. And the fastest one that we saw was the RAID 0 SSD, the Thunder Bay 4 Mini, and that was doing 919 megabytes a second. So you can see the performance numbers were sort of in line with what we were seeing from the Blackmagic test, which is gonna give you a real world perspective on how fast these drives are. And it's really up to you and your personal preferences which one you want to get. And so let's break that down. When we look at different hard drives, we really have to take into consideration the space, the speed, the redundancy, and the cost. And so let's just go through the different things. When I bought the my book from Western Digital, that was $649 that I got it, I think on Amazon. Now we're looking at the cost of the Thunder Bay 4, which is the standard hard drive with normal spinning disks. That's gonna be $979. And then the Thunder Bay 4 mini is gonna be $2,399. So there's a, a big jump once we move over to SSD because these one terabyte SSD drives are not cheap. And so that's really what it comes down to. And you've got this space speed, redundancy and cost. And so I already know that I need a redundant data storage so that I can make sure that my video files are backed up on the space that I'm gonna be working on. As well, I want the speed because I wanna be working on the speed, which is why I want Thunderbolt. So that's why I'm looking at the OWC versus some other competitors like the one I already have, or even something like the Pegasus. Now, when we look at space, the SSD is nice, but it's really small. And the amount of videos that I'm creating right now, it really doesn't make sense to me to limit myself to such a small device. I would need to buy multiple, and I'm not ready to be managing multiple drives. I'd rather have one that's gonna be able to grow with the amount of videos that I'm creating. And so that's why I'm really eyeing the Thunder Bay 4. It's bigger, it's a little bit more noisy, and it's a little bit slower, but the cost is going to be better and the amount of space is going to be better. So it really comes down to what are your requirements. If you just need a small, fast workspace, maybe you're just doing photos, the SSD version might make more sense, um, but then you have to sort of weigh off what are the, the costs involved and is it affordable for your budget? So we're not all made out of money. We can't always buy everything we want. I'd love to have a SSD version, but I really need a bigger one and right now a bigger one would not be affordable and it's currently not an option. So I'm gonna go with the Thunder Bay 4 and uh, OWC was kind enough to offer a, a small discount for me. So that is helping influence my decision, but I already knew that I was gonna get either this or probably the Pegasus depending on how uh, the the performance was. And I'm really enjoying the the value that I have here and the ability to have more space. I was really running out of space. And so 
I'm excited to take advantage of the OWC Thunder Bay Drive so that I can continue to create the videos, which is what I like to do, and not worry about running out of space all the time. All right, thank you for watching this review, and I hope that you guys have a great day.